know, I love me a TED Talk. It's a great way to keep up to date with advances and studies in education, technology, business and science. I love them, can't get enough of them. And then there's TEDx Talks, which are organised by people not actually affiliated with the company and usually consist of people complaining about some societal construct that no one really cares about, least of all me, with no real citations or message besides look how bad I've got it. Which is really fucking annoying, unless the person delivering that talk is the size of a fucking planet, as Sarah Bramblett is about to demonstrate. So, sit in your underwear and grab all the junk food you can find. We're about to feel really good about ourselves. When I first appeared on stage, what was your perception of me? I don't know about perception, but I did start humming the theme tune to Indiana Jones. Lazy, disgusting, perhaps depressed, unmotivated, unhealthy. Well, fuck, take your pick. Although you don't look like the kind of person who's used to picking just one of something. Based on my appearance, it's usually assumed that I'm lazy and unhealthy, that my weight and my condition in life are self-inflicted. Well, come on. When someone looks like they have elastic bands over their wrists, what the hell do you expect? That's not true. But often, I don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Wouldn't that defeat the whole point of it being a first impression then? It's not just fat people, Treacle. No one gets to make a second first impression. That's science. Maybe if you stopped going for seconds, you wouldn't be in this position. Now, those stereotypical perceptions that pop in people's minds when they see someone affected by obesity, that's weight bias. Let's be fair, bias is a slight tipping of the scales. I'm guessing nothing that could be considered slight happens when you climb up onto a set. And while a stranger's opinion of me, you know, like the woman in the grocery store who once made fun of my cankles... Oh yeah, once! Yeah, I'm sure. ...might hurt my feelings. Well, it's lucky you have all that cushioning to soften the blow, isn't it? But weight bias that I've experienced in healthcare has hurt me physically. When doctors and nurses have the perception that I'm lazy and unmotivated and non-compliant, it's an assumption, yeah, but it's a fucking fair one. I mean, look at you. Grab a couple of mirrors and take a look at yourself. Can you blame them for thinking that? You're not their only patient. Hell, you're probably worth two, and they can't be given the benefit of the doubt to every building-sized monstrosity of a human that waddles in through their doors. That influences the care they provide, and then has a negative impact on my health. I think fried chicken has had more of a negative impact on your health, Sarah. Yes, it may affect the treatment you're offered because it's fucking likely whatever's ailing you is down to your sheer fucking mass. That's not a negative impact, it's common fucking sense. Now, the Obesity Action Coalition, along with the Rudd Center for Food Policy and Obesity, Obesity Action. Those are two words you don't hear together very often. So, Obesity Action Coalition Chairwoman is Amber Hewitt-Garcia, who is... <laughs> oh, come on! Note that while there has been an increase in attention to obesity... Oh, there's always been plenty of attention when it comes to obesity. It's not like you can be fucking ignored, is it? Little has been done to end the bias that people affected by obesity experience in their everyday lives. And that bias extends from the workplace to education to the healthcare system. You're not being treated unfairly because you're fat, Sarah. That's why there are so many obese people. If anything, you're catered to a little too much. Oh, 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 that sentence had two meanings. Nice. Yeah, you get your breath back from standing and talking. You're basically an athlete, aren't you? Have a break. Now, perhaps you're wondering, how is my health? No, I'm not. I'm doing what most people in the medical profession would do. I'm looking at you and coming to the conclusion that it's not fucking good. Metabolically speaking, I'm actually pretty healthy. Bullshit! I don't have diabetes, I don't have sleep apnea, and I don't have high blood pressure. That's not being healthy, that's just not having those things. Like my skin is turning yellow from all the jaundice, but at least my blood pressure's okay. Totally healthy over here. So then, why am I so fat? Well, thank you for addressing the literal elephant in the room. It's assumed obesity is a self-inflicted condition due to poor lifestyle habits. I was actually born to be fat. Well done you then, you are fucking nailing it. My excess weight is caused by two conditions.
cake and yet more cake. The first one is lipedema. Yep, I'm gay now. Lipedema is the abnormal accumulation of adipose tissue, fat. And this adipose tissue accumulates in the legs, hips, thighs, sometimes upper arms. Okay, so now explain your Buddha belly and why you have more chins than a Chinese phone directory. It's a congenital condition that actually affects 11% of women, but it's usually mistaken for obesity and goes undiagnosed. Uh, how? When you have an abnormal collection of fat in your legs or upper arms or whatever, it's an abnormal collection, yeah? Pretty easy to see, unless you've camouflaged it with yet more fat. The advanced stages, including lymphedema. Basically, the lipedema fat begins to crush the lymphatic system. Now, lymphedema is the abnormal accumulation of lymph fluid. Yes, due to the glands being crushed by fat. So you could say it's caused by lipedema in some cases and caused by being fucking huge in other cases. Either way, lose some fucking weight. Even an abnormal collection of fat would reduce if you consist of less fucking fat. Being this size isn't healthy, Sarah. Just listen to your breathing. You see? Signs of lipedema are actually evident in pictures of me as a child. Yet, I wasn't diagnosed until I was in my 20s. Yeah, maybe the one where you're riding on Scooby-Doo. I wonder how he felt about that, by the way. But the other one, I mean, you're older and you have piled them pounds on, haven't you? You might have lipedema there. I can't see because your regular, ordinary fat makes it really fucking hard to tell. Is it any wonder you weren't diagnosed? The doctor would need fucking spelunking gear to give you a proper examination. And by that time, my weight had soared to over 500 pounds. Had I been diagnosed at an earlier age, I could have gotten treatment sooner. You've been diagnosed with it, and since then, you have gotten fucking bigger. So how would that have helped? You don't want to help yourself. You just want to blame everyone else. Be like those women in the first picture with the abnormal collections of fat on their arms and hips. That is a condition. That is an abnormality. Don't make the rest of your body match it. If you were obsessive compulsive about symmetry, I might be on board with that. But you're not, and I'm not. Had my doctors not been engaging in weight bias my entire childhood, my entire childhood, I might be telling a very different story today, or I might not be here at all. So they would have killed you? What the fuck are you saying? You were diagnosed with it and it didn't help because you went and got fucking fat anyway. And you're here. You are really, really here. Right, obesity is defined as a body mass index greater than 30. And despite my obesity being due to lipedema and lymphedema, Oh, is it? Fuck, though! You're in denial, missus! That's in denial, not in the Nile, because there would be world reports about how the water level rose dramatically. You said two conditions affect your weight, lipedema and lymphedema. As the latter is caused by the former, then technically, technically, just one condition caused your weight to rise. The other is over-fucking-eating. You don't create fat, you transfer it over to you. And that is the first law of thermodynamics. I am and will forever be categorized as having obesity. No, you will be categorized as being obese, not having obesity. You really need to stop blaming everyone and everything else. Now, before I go any further, there's a lot of debate about whether or not obesity is a disease or due to poor lifestyle choices. What debate? There's no debate. An eating disorder, maybe, but a disease? Why haven't Ethiopians got it? They seem to have all the diseases. Why not that one? Whether or not, I could give a whole speech on that. But there are facts that are not debatable and that impact everyone. These fucking pauses are killing me, man. I may have to cut this video short. Come on, then. Let's have some facts. Or at least the ones you didn't eat on the way over. Obesity is an epidemic that affects one-third of American adults. An epidemic is the spread of an infectious disease. Fat isn't infectious, unless you're trying to tell me their main reason for not leaving the house is so they don't pass it on to anyone else. Oh no, I've caught the fat! Obesity accounts for 21% of overall US healthcare expenditures. No, obesity-related illnesses account for that. Don't write it down and then not read it out. Do you know what kind of illnesses they are? Type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and atherosclerosis, all caused by fat. Businesses lose $4.3 billion every year in obesity-related absenteeism.
obesity related abs what the fuck sorry i can't come into work today i'm too fat and despite all the money being spent fighting the war on obesity Obesity rates continue to rise. Because no one can lose weight for you, dickhead! We might make a dent in it if fast food shops had the same powers as bar staff. Like when an obviously drunk guy orders another double whiskey, they say, sorry mate, you've had enough. But until we can do that, stop looking to other people and go out for a fucking walk. So why is this happening? I believe it's in part due to the fact that society and healthcare providers are blinded by bias. It's not bias, Sarah! You are fucking massive! Being that fucking big isn't healthy, there's no two ways about it! Your body wasn't designed to carry that much weight and neither was the fucking stage you're stood on! Instead of judging us, help us. You aren't helping yourself though, are you? You won't even admit to yourself that this is, while in part due to lipedema, mostly down to you! The focus needs to be on the individual patient not awareness. We know we're fat. We've been told we're fat our entire lives. Do something to help us improve our health. Well, I would offer you gym membership, but I know you wouldn't fucking go. Have a sit down, Sarah. You've been stood up for over four minutes now. You must be knackered. 15 years ago, April, the year 2000, I went to the doctor seeking help for my legs. Oh my shit, I'm not gonna go any further. Not today, anyway. I can't go on when I'm staring at what seems to be a close-up of a tarantula's fangs. Let's, uh, let's, let's get rid of that. There we go. So yeah, maybe I'll revisit this one and do the rest of it another time. Otherwise, my video will end up with a timestamp as big as this girl's BMI. So let's give Sarah a break for now because you could tell how out of breath she got from talking and just watching her made me feel as though I was trapped inside a lava lamp. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out my page Patreon to support this channel and keep my foul mouth foaming. The link is in the description and remember, if Pluto can go from being a planet to an asteroid, you can too.